So one of the cereals that's commonly used as a cover crops uh, in the Maritimes is either oats or barley. It's uh, pretty interesting when you uh, seed oats or barley in late summer when the days are starting to get shorter. They go much uh, more vegetative. Uh, you get a lot more uh, top growth on them compared to when you plant them in June. Uh, they produce uh, fine roots uh, which help to bind the soil together. Uh, you can see uh, that the uh, root exudates uh, make the uh, roots on the oak crop a lot thicker than, than, they, uh, than they normally are. Uh, very thick, uh, quick establishing, very good at choking out the weeds as well. Uh, so that'll probably go to uh, head maturity uh, in about 60 days. So uh, you should either uh, mow it to control it or uh, plant it uh, a little bit later in the fall so that uh, it doesn't produce uh, uh, seed uh, before winter sits in. Uh, we often see uh, barley mixed with uh, tillage radish or red clover uh, as, a, uh, as a cover crop mix uh, in, in the Maritimes. Here we have oats, which uh, has about a nine inch rooting depth. There's many small, fine rootlets um, that are really great at breaking up compaction. They're accessing a lot of nutrients that are there in the soil profile. And then as the oats break down, it releases those nutrients uh, for the subsequent crop. All of these fine roots and, uh, and the exudates that they, uh, that they exude um, are contributing to your more stable, long-term uh, soil organic matter aggregation. So another cereal that's uh, routinely used in the Maritimes is uh, winter rye. Uh, uh, seed is uh, very available here, uh, very inexpensive. Uh, winter rye, no matter when you plant it in that establishment year, uh, it will not go to seed on you. It has to go through that uh, vernalization from the winter, that cold period before it sends out the uh, seed head. Um, so uh, if you plant it uh, earlier uh, in the summer, it still uh, stays low to the ground, gets thicker by putting out uh, many more tillers, and uh, it will not go to head until uh, we get that cold period. Um, and it also uh, provides a very good uh, cover and uh, biomass in the spring. Uh, usually it'll overwinter in the Maritimes very well. Uh, it goes to head about uh, the last week of May, uh, and we can uh, uh, take that off as a, as a crop and get another uh, veggie crop in behind it, or we can incorporate that into the soil as well. It's interesting to note the comparison of growth between the winter rye here and the oats. I mean, there's a difference in height of about a foot, but probably right about the same amount of biomass, you'd say, between the two? Yeah, at this point, yeah. At this point, but over the course of the, by um, October, we'd probably expect more biomass from the winter rye, would you say? As oats uh, mature, send out their head, uh, they'll slow down. This will continue to uh, thicken up, send up more tillers, and uh, then, of course, if we overwinter it, we'll have much more uh, spring growth as well. Winter rye is great because you can seed it really quite late. How late would you say would be um, for good establishment for erosion protection over the winter? How late could you go for seeding? So we often see uh, plantings go well into October. That's not giving you a lot of growth uh, this October, not a lot of uh, erosion protection, but uh, will produce uh, a good amount of biomass next spring. If you're looking for fall erosion protection, you certainly want to get that in as early as possible. Uh, probably around uh, September 15th uh, and have good erosion protection for this fall and winter. If you're into October and you don't have a cover crop seeded and you want at least something as a stopgap, winter rye is still an excellent option. It's better to have something in there. You might not have a lot of top growth, but you still have a little bit of roots in there holding the soil in place. It's not going to be a perfect system, but it sure as heck is better than nothing. It's going to give you uh, erosion protection uh, you know, mid-April through June, uh, through May, June, uh, very well. And really, when you get pushed late, it's really your only option for a cover crop. An important thing to note about rye, though, is uh, it is allopathic, so it does an excellent job of choking out weeds uh, while it's growing. Um, but when you incorporate it the next spring, it's best to wait a week, sometimes up to two weeks for more sensitive crops before you plant, because the allopathy of the rye can reduce your cash crop growth. That allelopathy can work for you as well. A lot of uh, strawberry growers are after that rye straw, 
because it gives them a little bit of uh, weed control that they're not expecting out of the straw. So our last plot on the uh, tour is our unplanted check. We didn't put any uh, seed on this plot. Uh, it was bare ground and we left it bare, but you can just see the uh, weed pressure that we do have in this field. Uh, and this is very typical of uh, the vegetable farms uh, throughout Nova Scotia. So while you did notice some weeds in some of those cover crop uh, plots earlier, um, seeing how much we have here is a really good comparison. Your sorghum sedan grass, your pearl millet, your winter rye, uh, all did an excellent job of choking out weeds, so did most of your brassicas. So in this plot we have uh, winter rye. Uh, just a reminder, we planted these uh, plots in the middle of summer. Uh, winter rye needs to go through that cold uh, fertilization period before it uh, grows upright and uh, on a seed head. So uh, we have a very thick uh, uh, stand here, a lot of tillers from each plant, but uh, as it gets thick, uh, disease sets in, as you can see on the leaves, and, uh, and so it, it doesn't look that impressive. Even though this does look quite ill, I would expect it to overwinter, and uh, you're going to have to uh, deal with it next spring. Uh, it'll grow up quite rapidly and uh, put out a seed head before uh, the end of May.